Good morning, everyone. The sun is shining, and God is uh, God is some sunshine that we can worship in this morning. And uh, I just want to welcome each one of you. And uh, we'll jump right into announcements. So we got quite a few announcements to run through this morning. Um, just a reminder: there, most of them are in your bulletin here. The twenty seventh, um, the Bible study on Wednesday night will resume in the Jordan River Rules at 7 p.m. And then uh, Sunday School and Worship next week as well. And uh, Pastor and Mary will, will be returning tomorrow. Um, so in the short term, if you have any uh, uh, things that you need to reach out to uh, Drew or any of the deacons, it's listed there. Um, and then next, or I should say this coming Saturday is already April 30th. And that's going to be church cleanup day. So we're going to come down at 9 o'clock uh, on that morning and uh, help tidy up the, uh, the church for the spring cleanup days. And then also there's a reminder that the uh, pastor survey uh, sheet is due. There's also a basket in the back on the table. You can uh, drop it in the, in the basket there or you can give it to one of the deacons. Um, and then also, uh, backing up a day, um, the 29th is the chili supper. Uh, over at Cornerstone Christian Academy. So that is Friday night from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., and it's at the gym. And uh, it says, ladies, please consider baking a pie or two. And uh, if you need someone to deliver it, Jane is willing to do that. So we appreciate that. Um, and then some ushers for, for the months coming up. Does anyone else have any other announcements that aren't covered this morning? Okay. Well, with that, let's start with a word of prayer this morning. Lord, we just thank you that we can gather together in your house, that we can worship you, that we are in a place where, um, in a country where we can freely do this. And Lord, we just know that this time that we spend together is to be able to learn from your word, to absorb it, take it with us. And uh, we just thank you for the travels of everyone coming down this morning where they can come and hear the word shared. And that, with that, we just want to continue to uplift you and glorify you with our service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So now if you'd stand with me and uh, turn to hymn number 238, Because He Lives.
For the scripture reading this morning, we're in the book of John, and chapter 20, verses 19 through 25, in Jesus' name. Then the same day, at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, saying unto them, Peace be unto you. And when they, and when he had said, he showed unto them the hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sin ye remit are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, ye are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And here ends the scripture reading. Now if you're believing in Christ this morning, if you would uh, share with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, by the Holy Ghost, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. So for special music this morning, there's going to be two hymns that we're going to listen to, and it is In the Cross... And the second one is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus by Jonathan Larson.
Oh, for grace to trust him more. That ends. Thanks for sharing that, Aaron, and, and uh, playing that for us. We're going to take some time for prayer. Um, I've had some prayer requests brought before me. Does anybody have any specific prayer requests this morning? All right, with that, let's, let's take these things to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for being with us here today, for being with those that are not only present here, but those that are <clears throat> listening, that are shut in. We know that they uh, can't always uh, make it, and we just thank you that we can know that you are with them as well as us. Each day, each step we take, you're by our side, and we can lean on you for strength, for understanding, and for the forgiveness of our sins. Each one of us is a sinner, and we are born that way, and we continue to stumble down that path our entire life. So we thank you for showing us the way that you died on the cross. Just a week ago, we remembered that day that you, that you were uh, resurrected, that you came back and you conquered death. And we know that with that, we can lean on you in all things. Lord, we just pray that you be with our family and friends that we know still need Christ, that are losing their way in the world, and uh, you know who they are, and you know that uh, they need you, and we just pray that we would be able to uh, take things to them in the way that they need it, that they would see something or hear something that would remind them of you, that the whole world would have a revival as it's continually turning away from you, Lord, and that, you would, that they would turn to worshiping you. We pray that you would be with our military, our leaders, our country. We pray that you would also be with all those that are not uh, stationed at home right now and that you would be with them as they are abroad and in different countries and be with different countries, Lord. There's uh, still wars going on. There's uh, battling in Jerusalem and Ukraine and Russia. They're all across this world is filled with strife and we know that it can be, that it can be given peace if they would just look to you, Lord. Lord, we know that there are those that are sick today, that are recovering from surgery, that have surgeries coming. All of these different health concerns are praises and or requests brought up to you, Lord. And you know what those needs are, and we thank you that you are by them the true physician, the healer, and our bodies are only temporary here, Lord, until we one day are forever with you in heaven. We pray that you be with our mission, Pacific Garden Mission, the church in Kenya, um, the Marie Sandvik Center. Uh, there's a long list of missions we support and those that even that we don't specifically support that are doing um, the true work of giving out the gospel, of sharing the name of Jesus across the world. And we just pray that you would uplift them today, that you would give them the funds they need, that you would give them the strength to continue if they have difficult decisions, Lord, that you would guide them in their decision-making as they do that. Lord, we also, as we are turning the seasons, we want to pray that you're with the farmers in the spring planting, that they would uh, be able to put in crops um, to be able to provide for our country, to provide for their animals, and, uh, and to provide for us that, uh, that all these things would uh, happen as you see fit and that you would just watch over them for safety and uh, that they would have a crop that they would be able to harvest in the fall. Lord, we also want to pray that you would be with Pastor and Mary as they uh, continue to travel and uh, enjoy some uh, time uh, with one another and uh, visiting different areas of the country, that you would just give them uh, safe travels and uh, bring them back to us uh, in the next few days here. Lord, so we just pray that you're with them. We also pray that you're with uh, Darren as he gives the, the message today that the words that have been laid on his heart would be shared with each one of us and we can look at those words and together we can uh, see how your word has been written down for us to be able to be preserved for all the years that it has and that it's the truth and we can trust in it, Lord. So we just thank you for your word and that Darren's willing to share with us this morning. Lord, we pray now that our offerings and our tithes would would go to you and that they would be uh, um, a remembrance of, or that they would be um, from the command you give in your word and that they would be given to you freely, that uh, they would go out to support the missions and the other things that it does for you and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you remain standing before the message, we'll turn to 219, Jesus paid it all.
So the scripture that we're going to be looking at this morning is, like you see in your bulletin, John 20, uh, 26 through 29, in Jesus' name. After eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger and see my hands, and reach here your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. Father, we're thankful for these reminders of who you are, Lord, that you can be believed in and trusted in, even though we don't, we don't see you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, this morning our rock and our redeemer as we look as we look at your word this morning lord please speak to us through it spirit of god in what we need to hear to have hope and peace in this troubled world and we know that that can only come through jesus christ so help us to look on this word this morning lord in jesus name i pray amen uh, please be seated. So as you can see in your bulletins, the title is uh, for this message. I, I felt it uh, right. Just It just kept coming back to me, believing without seeing. Um, and that's kind of where we're at today, um, obviously in our time. And I hope to show you this morning the importance of believing the Savior, Savior, Jesus, that you're not able to see. And with the help of God's Holy Spirit, through this account of, of Thomas um, that, we, that we just read and that we're going to dig into this morning. So obviously, uh, last week, if you remember, I, we read the account in the first part of John chapter 20. I think it was John 21 through 9 um, during Resurrection Day service. And I just wanted to kind of, um, as we still remember uh, the resurrection of Jesus, we should be celebrating that and remembering that every day of the year, every day of our lives. I just wanted to kind of summarize um, the first part of uh, John chapter 20 with you guys before I started in on, on, the, on the message here around these verses 26 through 29. And also kind of summarize um, what we just, what Trent read for us, the scripture reading as well, that, that kind of leads up to uh, the passage that I, that I just read for you here. So I'm just going to summarize if you guys want to, if you haven't already turned to John 20, if you have your Bibles, and just kind of follow along and Obviously, starting at the beginning of the chapter, taking us to verse 26, or 25, excuse me, through 25. Uh, just a quick summary to build us up to, to what I just read and what we're going to study in depth here. So in the beginning of John 20, we see Mary, John, and Peter coming early, finding an empty tomb. Verse 9 says that they didn't understand what Jesus said before, that he must rise from the dead. John and Peter went home while Mary stayed at the tomb. That's verses 11 and 12. She was weeping, looking into the tomb, and she saw two angels. They asked her why she was weeping. All this time, Mary was thinking someone had stolen the body of Jesus in verse 14. Suddenly, Jesus appeared. She thought it was the gardener and asked him where the body was. Jesus called her name, Mary. 
in verse 16. She recognized him, recognized him and tried to hug him. And Jesus told her he had to ascend to the Father and to go tell the disciples. This brings us to the scripture uh, read earlier by Trent in the service. Now, starting in verse 19, it was Sunday evening, and the disciples were hiding with the doors locked. Obviously, the Bible says that most translations say the doors were shut, uh, but they were actually locked. Because they were afraid of the Jews. Jesus appeared to them, showing them his hands inside. The disciples were obviously overjoyed, and they rejoiced. They were happy to see him. Verse 20. And then Jesus, we see Jesus commissioning them to preach the gospel, filling them with the spirit of power until Pentecost. Thomas wasn't with the disciples when Jesus appeared this first time. I'm just going to read verse 25 uh, before we dig into the scripture that we're going to look at mainly today. <clears throat> So the other, the other disciples were saying to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. So again, this brings us to verse 26 of our scripture that we are going to study more in depth this morning. The first part of verse 26 says, after eight days. And that kind of puts us right now, right? Uh, uh, obviously, we're eight days out from the resurrection. And I, I felt the Holy Spirit when I was looking for something to speak on with you guys. I felt the leading of the Holy Spirit to share this section of Scripture with you guys. Um, because God gave me the opportunity to share on the Sunday after the resurrection. A uh, pretty special day. They all are. Uh, this is an important event in the early church. As Jesus, this second time, obviously we saw, if you go back to verse 19, um, Jesus appears the first time to the disciples in, in that room where they were staying. So he appears the second time. Uh, to encourage and strengthen his disciples. This should encourage us also, because Jesus never abandons his true followers, and, and we're thankful for that. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure anybody that either is going through persecution or has gone through persecution is thankful for that, that Jesus never abandons us in our time, times of need, in times of weakness. Also in, in verse 26, it says his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. So I, I had to ask myself the question, and I'm sure you guys have probably asked this as well. Um, why was Thomas not with the disciples on the, evening of the on the evening of the resurrection a week before this? Was it fear? I guess maybe we'll, maybe we'll never know, right? Uh, it could have been fear um, with the reaction of the disciples um, hiding themselves away. John eleven sixteen indicates that Thomas was, for the most part, a courageous man. Um, if you read that in, in John 11, if you turn to John eleven sixteen, 16, uh, he was willing to die with Jesus. I know he was kind of being a little sarcastic. Um, we can kind of see Thomas's pessimism um, as we all as you really see when you when you read the accounts of Thomas but going back to John 11:16 it says therefore Thomas who is called Didymus said to his fellow disciples let us also go so that we may die with him obviously we we see that Thomas is called, Didymus means the twin in, in Scripture. Um, 
And we don't really know, we obviously don't really know, I don't believe, who his twin is. Um, but nonetheless, we see him referred to, we see that name given to him uh, in Scripture. And also John 14, 5 tells us that Thomas was spiritually minded for the most part up until this, up until Jesus was, was killed, crucified. Uh, he wanted to ask questions uh, despite his pessimistic outlook. Um, if you go back to John 14, John 14, 5, very uh, awesome section of scripture, very, uh, gives us a lot of hope. But tucked in the middle, John says, or I'm sorry, Thomas says to Jesus, we do not know you where you are going. How do we know the way? He's asking Jesus that question, right? So he had to be spiritually minded. And I just, I guess I, disappointed for him as, as you read this and you read this over and over again and you study ab about it. Um, you think of the missed opportunity of fellowship he could have had with Jesus and the disciples that, that first Sunday, um, the Sunday of the resurrection. Again, if you look at John 20, 20, it says the disciples rejoiced when they saw Jesus on the evening of the resurrection. It's a shame because Thomas could have gained strength and encouragement to face the week ahead. And that must have been a horrible week um, after, after Jesus was crucified. Instead, he faced the week with what looks like a heart of unbelief, as we see at the end of verse 25. Uh, like I read earlier, I will not believe, Thomas says. Unless I see the evidence, I will not believe, basically is what Thomas is saying. Unless I see, I won't believe. As we look at Thomas' situation, it makes me think of a sheep without a shepherd. We as believers, we don't fare well alone facing a crisis. And that's kind of what Thomas is trying to face alone. or At least that's what it appears in, in Scripture. Um, we need the strength of other like-minded fellow believers. And I, I thought of Hebrews 10.25. Um, I know we've... That, that verse gets quoted quite a bit, right? Not forsaking the fellowship of like-minded believers. John 10, or I'm sorry, Hebrews 10.25. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, obviously, that's... that's talking about us today and as we look for the hope, the blessed hope of Jesus' return um, for us in, in the rapture of the church. But it, nonetheless, it's a command from Scripture to worship together like it says so we can encourage each other and build strength from each other, lift each other up in the one true faith. So looking at the end, back to John 20, looking at the end of verse 26, it says, Jesus came, the doors having been shut and stood in their midst. The Lord Jesus in his resurrected body could still be touched and felt, but could now pass through walls and travel from place to place in the blink of an eye. Isn't that amazing? I, every time I read that, I still... It brings a smile to my face uh, of, what, of what Jesus, the power that Jesus has in his new resurrected body, the first fruits. And you think, you know, if you've taken Jesus to be your Savior, you have a lot to look forward to, right? You have that same thing to look forward to. Um, you'll have the same resurrected body. No more pain. No more sadness, 
forever fit to serve the Lord. Um, and that, that's uh, in a perfect way. That's, uh, that's a lot of hope. And we all see, we see as well Jesus' greeting, right? This is the, if you look back in verse 19, uh, we see Jesus saying after he showed up to the disciples, peace be with you. And now at the end of verse 26, we see the same greeting. Peace be with you. Uh, something similar, if you've ever been to Israel, I, I haven't, like I told Sunday school this morning. I, uh, but there's a similar greeting in Israel today, and it's shalom. If you guys remember when you went to Israel, um, those of you that have been there, you probably heard that, shalom, meaning peace. So, you know, after all Thomas's pessimism, uh, the disciples were still overjoyed at seeing their Savior. They didn't, they didn't let, let Thomas's pessimism uh, keep the joy out of their hearts. And dare I say, that's how we should be uh, every day of our lives, not letting the negativity and the... the the sound of a war cry, like we're hearing, like Trent brought up in prayer time. Um, there's just seems like constant war around us right now. In verse 27, then Jesus said to Thomas, reach here with your finger and see my hands and reach your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believing. So we see Jesus providing Thomas with the evidence he was looking for earlier. Although Thomas was there when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, going back to John 11, he refused to believe Jesus rose himself. Jesus shows him mercy by not rebuking him, but lovingly invites him to believe. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. As I was studying this account, I thought about the, the difference between doubt and unbelief. We always hear, what do you hear Thomas being called most of the time, right? Doubting Thomas. You, you always, it's kind of, it almost gets to be kind of a, not a joke, but it's pretty common to hear that. Thomas chose to look at the resurrection of Jesus like a modern-day scientific unbeliever. He wanted proof. Not only did he doubt, but he would not believe. The person who doubts says to himself or himself, I cannot believe. There are too many problems. If you choose unbelief, you are saying, I will not believe unless you give me the evidence I asked for. This is a dangerous place to be in spiritually, denying the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just wanted to uh, read to you guys uh, in Hebrews chapter 3, uh, verses 12 and 13, uh, the writer of Hebrews kind of talks about this. And it's a really good explanation of what, uh, what trap we can get into if we question or if we doubt or simply don't believe in, in the Lord Jesus. So Hebrews 3, 12 and 13. Take care, brethren, that there not be any, in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long it is, as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So I would, I would propose to say that we are acting evil if we don't believe the promises of God. We do have an evil heart of unbelief. This is kind of what's... Well, not kind of. This is what's wrong with the world today. We have God's inspired word telling us what is going to happen in the future in Bible prophecy. 
But most people totally ignore the Bible. And I, I believe that in these last days, that's, you know, I've always asked myself, how are people going to watch the rapture happen and the unbelievers left behind? And how, how can they have that excuse when, when the Bible is here? They could know almost step by step what is going to happen. Yet if you ignore it, you're not going to know a thing. And you're going to believe in lies. The lies of the Antichrist that he is going to put forward to explain the dis disappearance of millions of people. I know I'm kind of getting off track with that. Um, but it's a, it's a good example of unbelief and, you know, seeing what Thomas saw, what he, what he was able and privileged to look at. Um, it's just a shame that he didn't have that, the belief of the other disciples. And he would have if he would have been there the first Sunday. So Thomas, back to John chapter 20 again. Thomas, being able to see Jesus answered in verse 28 with his confession of faith. My Lord and my God. Has that been your response to the Lord today? Or in your life? I hope so. I hope that's been your response to the Lord Jesus. With awe and worship, responding to him, saying, My Lord and my God. If not, please see your lost condition in need of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 29, Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. So you've heard that saying again, right? Seeing is believing. The disciples had the advantage of seeing Jesus' resurrection body firsthand. People struggle in our time these days and probably for millennia obviously, to put their trust in a God that they're unable to see. Although we, you know, as I was preparing, I, I thought about this when I, when I wrote this down. We can't see Jesus directly like the disciples had the privilege of doing. But we see his creation, right? We see God's creation, and we know there's a God we know, we know the one true God is alive and well. Um, we see miracles that he does in our lives, preserving us from accidents and, and different things that God, you look back and you say, wow, that, that was God preserving me for some reason and prolonging my life. As believers... We have all the first-hand evidence in the Gospels written down by faithful men so that we can trust and believe. If you look forward to John 20, 31, but these have been written so that you may believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. We don't have every miracle that Jesus did. Um, looking, you know, going back a verse to John twenty thirty. John says that he didn't, he wasn't able to write down every miracle, but what's written down is more than enough, right? What's written down in the Gospels is more than enough for us to realize who Jesus is, that he is the Son of God, and that he's, that he's our Savior. So the question I have to ask those of, that might be watching this on live stream or later, are you going to trust in yourself or the false gods of this world? Or are you going to trust in the Savior of this world, the Lord Jesus Christ? As I read John 20, 29, 
You guys probably have this next verse memorized. 1 Peter 1.8. And again, this is a verse that is used uh, quite a bit um, when it comes to trusting something you don't you can't see. And Peter used this verse in his epistle to communicate that to who he was writing to, well, and, and us as well. 1 Peter 1.8 And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Isn't that wonderful? We, it's a perfect description of what the believer, after Jesus showed himself, has to get they have to get to a place realizing that Jesus is real even though I can't see him feel him so on if you guys remember first first Corinthians 15 6 says that Jesus showed himself to more than 500 brethren at one time after showing himself to Peter and the other disciples so Jesus showed himself to a lot of people didn't he And I I just thought, you know, Jesus had to show himself to his disciples so that they could testify to the early church and us the validity of of the risen Jesus Christ. It's valid. It happened. No matter what the scientific, unbelieving, godless shows on TV want to tell you, it happened. And we trust in that. That's our blessed hope the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, um, John says in his first epistle, 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, he describes how the disciples were lucky enough, or luck is the wrong word, excuse me, fortunate enough to be in the position they were in to see the risen Christ and, and feel and touch. John, 1 John 1.1 1, 1, What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And the word of life is Jesus, right? John 1.1 1, 1, He is the living word. For without faith, it is impossible to believe him. I'm sorry, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Just because we do not believe, I'm sorry, just because we do not have Jesus, Jesus' physical body in front of us, doesn't mean we can't have the joy of the disciples who had the physical proof. As Christians, this account should increase our faith in Christ. Because we can, look, we can look back, we can see the evidence, trusting in God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration from God, right? All scripture is inspired by God. It's not just some dreamer writing it down. God inspired this written word. The risen Lord didn't want to leave Thomas in the condition he was in. Jesus answered Thomas's request, right? Back in verse 27, he said, Reach here, feel my fingers, my hands, thrust your hand into my side. Jesus answered Thomas's request. In Mark 16, 9 through 14, It appears that it wasn't only Thomas who was struggling with feelings of unbelief. If you look back, uh, I'll read it for you, in Mark 16, 9 through 14, the last so many verses in that that, uh, gospel. Mark 16, 9 through 14. Now after he had risen early on the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, 
from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. After that, he appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking along their way to the country. They went away and reported it to the others, but they did not believe them either. Afterward, he, Jesus, appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. So we see that because of the trauma of the crucifixion, all the disciples at one time or another struggled with this in, in that time period. It wasn't only Thomas. Until they could actually see Jesus, most of the disciples would have struggled with this. I mean, I, I put my, again, I asked this, that question about, you know, in Sunday school today, what would, uh, we were talking about Rahab and her lie about hiding the, the, uh, the spies. And I, I asked myself this week when I was working through that, and I also asked the Sunday school class, what would you have done? Can you say for sure that you wouldn't have lied? You know, we, we asked, I, I put myself in the same shoes of the disciples. How would I have been um, in a weakened state after the shock and awe of, of the crucifixion of what Jesus had to go through and now the fear they feel um, because they're being hunted down basically by the Jews or that's going to start soon in, as we work through the New Testament. When the, woman, when the women came from the tomb to report to the disciples that the angels said Jesus had risen, Luke 24.11 says, These words appeared to them as nonsense, and they would not believe the women either. I guess, you know, we're not saved by trust. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong part. We're not saved by seeing Jesus or believing in his miracles, although some miracles help people see their lost condition. We are saved by trusting and believing in the Lord Jesus. The ten disciples went from having fear to being courageous with the help of God's Holy Spirit. Thomas went from unbelief to confidence, as we see in, his, in Thomas's testimony my Lord and my God. What a moment that must have been, not only for Thomas, but uh, to increase the joy of the other disciples as well. How about you this morning? Are you willing to trust in a Savior you are unable to see? I beg you, if you are not trusting in Christ, believe that he lived a sinless life, died a sinner's death, rose from the grave the third day. Believe these accounts that have been written so that we might believe. Acknowledge that you are a sinner and the only one that can save you is Jesus. Ask him to forgive you of your sin, come into your life and be your savior. Trust that he has when you, when you ask him that. While you still have life, you still have time to make this decision. If you ignore Jesus, your life might end, and you'll not, you won't get another chance. If, if you die as an unbeliever, we know what the Bible says about, about what's in store for the unbelieving person. Uh, what's in store in eternity for them? The Bible calls it the second death. Uh, the, the great, after the great tribulation and after Jesus comes back and takes the power back from, takes the earth back, 
there will be the thousand-year reign of Jesus on earth. And after that, uh, there will be a great white throne judgment, the Bible calls it. And the unbelievers that are in hell will die a second death. They will be resurrected out of hell to be judged at the great white throne, only to realize that their final destination is the lake of fire. And for every unbeliever that, did, that isn't trusting in Christ, if you die in that state, you will burn for eternity. And it's a scary thought. Um, I just wanted to leave you with John 3, 36. It, it, it's a really good, the last part of that verse, it's a good description of what the wrath of God is. Jesus came to save you from the wrath of God. All you have to do is trust in him and realize that he is who he said he was. He is who he says he is. John 3.36 He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. If you don't obey, you're not trusting. Yeah, what this verse is talking about is by not trusting Jesus and asking him to be your Savior, you are not obeying. And I just wanted to say, God didn't create us to feel his wrath. That was not God's intent. So don't continue to face death without Jesus' love. Come to him today if you don't really know him. I'm sorry, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, come to him today. Let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, help, help us to realize that you are real. Your resurrection was real. Skeptics and historians, they, they all agree usually that you died but that all ends when we start talking about the fact that you're sitting on God's right hand. You're the second person of the Trinity. You're our Savior. So, Lord, if there's anybody out in this church or, or watching on live stream or will watch this later that needs the hope of salvation in this, in this torn up world, oh, Lord, move in their hearts with your Spirit. And I hope today they can, they don't have to live out the rest of the day without realizing and knowing that they too can be saved and have the joy of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So in our response hymn, if you could stand and turn to uh, hymn number 223, What Will You Do With Jesus?
close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross for us, giving us this choice, the choice to choose you, to be with you forever, but that choice is for us. As Darren mentioned, we each have that choice and is laid on our hearts to be with you for eternity or to suffer in damnation for eternity. In the final song, it says, neutral we cannot be. We must make this decision. So Lord, if there's anyone out there that needs help in that decision, that would like more information about you, we just pray that they would reach out to a Christian, a Christian that they trust. And Lord, we just thank you for your strength each day as we go forward. We know that you are by our side. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I want to share from Joshua as we close here. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go.